Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you once again for joining us. We are back for another episode today. It is another triple threat going. It is the Shant, Dan, the man. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Was I interrupting something important? Oh, no. I'm just saying, like, as long as I don't get well, well, I mean, I, uh, no, 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 go. I swear I thought you sick son of a bitch. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is the Kamish. I will be the advocate of the podcast. I will be the man they call. Say, I yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you were so close on stealing his gift. I said the man called, not the man. But you paused. Really Look, to delay. be you the man, you, you got gotta to... be the man. Wait, what? No, wait. <laughs> to be the man, woo! No, that's not it. That's not it. No, no, damn it. We're getting there. Um... Um, I say you got to be the best there is. The be- no, oh, damn it, that's either. not it either. A man in the hand. Oh nope, I'm gonna steer away from that one. <laughs> okay, see, he's slowly turning into me. <laughs> well, with that said, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, hopefully not too young. YouTube today, tonight, or whenever you're watching this, proudly brings to you its zero time podcast of the year, the advocate, the commish. The man, Dan, and the third man, the Shant. Let's get ready to discuss all your favorite WWE programming, which, by the way, happy birthday to the WWE Network as we celebrate five years. Five time? Five time. Five time. Five time? Five time. Wrestling Network of the Year, I guess. Is it? I, don't know, I think wrestling. it's the only wrestling network right yeah, now. Yeah, the only one of it. <laughs> Anywho, you can catch it for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of only nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Oh, sorry. It's not $10. It's not $1,000. Not one. A million. A dollars. But only nine ninety nine. I mean, you could try to negotiate. I just don't think it would go very well. I tried one time and it didn't work. Ah. I think it's just set at one pricing. I, uh, when I did the free trial and originally, I forgot to cancel. <laughs> <laughs> and I got the notification saying your shit's been renewed, and I was like, oh, uh, hey, WWE, I didn't mean to do that. And they refunded me the money. So, thanks, WWE. So you got nine ninety nine back? They gave me nine ninety nine to not be on their network. <laughs> For only nine ninety nine. <laughs> Uh, we, we want you to be subscribed so little, here's your money. But please do subscribe. Quick sponsorships like usual, but they never hear us. <laughs> Coca-Cola. That's all I got. Also, Kraft Parmesan Romano cheese. If you're making pasta or other things, put some cheese on it. Now, you're asking why the hell are we sponsoring Kraft Cheese? Well, I just had pizza. And I just kicked Stan. Well, he did just out of the the WWE. WWE. Thank you. (laughs) Um, Also, one more thing. Since you did mention the five-year anniversary of the network, it's only proper, even though it happened last night, he got his ass kicked, supposedly. Happy 70th birthday to the 16th time, even though he's acknowledged as 21 21 time. 60-time world heavyweight champion, the limousine riding, jet flying, kiss stealing, wheeling dealing, son of a gun. Woo! Woo! The nature boy, Ric Flair. Oh God! <laughs> and apparently on his Instagram, he did wish a well-received warning to Dave Bautista to never ruin his party again. Yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> um, Maybe they repeat the party tonight on SmackDown. <laughs> and that's where Charlotte shows up and Dave just attacks him again. <laughs> or she tells Dave to attack him again. Ooh. Wow. Since she doesn't like living in the shadow of her father, but yet replicates almost everything. Woo! Boo, the, boo that woo. Boo the woo. <laughs> um... 
Well, uh, to go off of last night, uh, last night we received some great news. Um, Roman Reigns is in remission. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, personally, um, it, it kind of sucks because we, we talked a lot of trash and the episode where we actually um, told the world our feelings um, due to technical difficulties, that episode got lost. Um, personally, um, Look, it was a touchy subject. We look, we're very critical of who we speak about in regards to in this in this network because that's how we feel as the wrestler, the as the sports entertainer, as the superstar. Vince, am I saying the words correctly? But as a human being of the populous world, there's still an everyday person that yeah. doesn't deserve that much heat and hatred. Um, I think when in the process of us discussing Roman at one point, um, I had mentioned if you could find a way to get him off TV for a while, uh, it would probably be in his best interest. Um, I didn't exactly expect to, expect this to be the reason that he ended up off TV, but I think it, it still served the purpose, and I think it may have thrown a little bit of extra sugar on it for the fans. Yeah. So... Uh, Going forward, I, th- I think I think he might be in a better well, position. But well, go ahead. I, no, well, let's discuss it. Like, like, let, let's just see. Okay, so if if you didn't catch Monday Night Raw, you I mean if you have Direct TV, feel free to catch it there. You can rewind, or if you wait for another twenty days, you can catch it only on the WWE Network for a non negotiable but very reasonable days. price of only nine ninety nine. Yeah, they got this weird thirty day copyright thing going on. Or it's if their fucking show, <laughs> if you're that <laughs> desperate to see. Half-assed highlights of Raw. Feel free to watch it on Hulu. I don't know how much Hulu costs, nor do I care. I'll tell eight, you, eight, it's eight, not nine ninety nine. I think it is. I just I've seen the code. I think it's eight. I think it's seven ninety nine. But either way, still, you can't catch all of your WWE favorites on that network. So um, for only nine ninety nine. Yeah. So here's the thing: <laughs> we see Roman come out. He, he seemed a little like I don't know. hesitant. Not just hesitant, but like shook. Yeah. Nervous. Because it's like, okay, I haven't been here in a while. I I don't... He looked like he didn't know how to address people about it. Like, he was happy, but at the same time, it's like, you still saw Joe. You didn't see him as Roman Reigns. Did you see him right before he got into the ring? And he hesitated and hung his foot over the... uh, Yeah, like he really like scanned the entire ring and he's like, oh shit. Probably taking it, taking it in. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it's a lot to take in. Yeah. I don't know if that was, if that was a bit or if that was a legitimate emotion we got to see, but... And even in his announcement, he seemed a little like, you know, I'm thankful to God, you know, I'm, I'm back. I'm able to perform and do what I love the most. But he seemed nervous because it's like, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, he was nervous. But, you know, on the surface, he seemed calm and ready to give that speech. Yeah. Oh, God, you're <laughs> doing it. I'm going to stop you there because I will <laughs> smack you across the face when you finish it. Did I miss something? I just something? wanted to pepper that in. I thought it would be funny. Did I miss His something? eight mile joke. <laughs> Palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms. Shut, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> shut up. Um... Well, on that, um, <laughs> we're yeah. here to, today to discuss, I feel like, like you said, Dan, maybe a blessing in disguise, it's kind of WWE's chance of a second chance reset to get button. it right. Yes, a reset button. Um, that's what we're here to discuss today. You guys taking in what's happened with Joe, you know, over the last couple months, he just came back into the ring and surveying what happened after the announcement where he and Seth came to Dean's aid indirectly. Um, personally, I would like to know, let's say if, if, if the ball was given to you and it was said, here's Roman's program, how would you book it? Go. Um... Where would you have him start? What would you have him do? Would you have him get into in-ring action immediately? Would you hold back and say, hold on, let's do in-ring promos and a spear here and there? Or how would you go about it? Um, 
If he's healthy, I don't have a problem with him uh, getting back into the ring immediately. Um, I want him to show vulnerability. I don't want you to jettison him back to being uh, the semi-invincible Roman Reigns that we had. Because he just came back. Yeah. Um, If you hypothetically put him in a match with Drew McIntyre and he crushes him, crushes Drew McIntyre... That does nobody any favors because then the fans who have this affection for Roman right now going are going to look at it and go, oh, God, we're doing this again. Again, yeah. Um, so I would say I would say make him vulnerable. Hell, have him even lose his first, have him lose his first match. But it has to be against somebody like a Drew McIntyre. Yeah, yeah. Um, just show him getting back on the horse. Have it be a pseudo triumph story. I think that's a good first angle for right. him. Um, granted, it also looks like we're building toward some sort of shield um, match at, you said, I think, Fastlane. We were talking yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ultimately, what I'd like to see is, here. here's what I'd like to see. And I know WWE is probably not going to do it because why would you do this with the, the hottest topic uh, in the mainstream media that you've got going right now? Look at this this triumphant return from to for, to WWE from Roman Reigns after beating cancer. Yeah. Um, I would like to see during the Superstar Shakeup shift him over to SmackDown for a little bit. Ooh, okay. Let him let him kind of uh, let him kind of build build back build himself back up from the from the bottom, so to speak. Um, but mostly, I think it'll just give him a change of scenery because I th- I think one people are going to be tired of seeing him against. All the guys over on Raw, Braun and Drew and Baron and because uh, right before he, I don't know, he, he could kick Baron's ass. <laughs> send Baron over to SmackDown then too. <laughs> um, have him be the big dog's chew toy. And so I think that if you move him over there, it gives him a couple of fresh rivalries to roll right, with. Yeah, um, it lets him build up on the smaller stage in uh, Vince's mind. The B show. Yeah. And hell, it might even help lift the ratings of SmackDown. Not to suggest SmackDown's bad, but neither show is really killing it right now. And they're going to Fox, so... Yeah. Um, Ooh, God knows what that deal is going to do to that show. And so, I mean, you could, shit, you could trade AJ and Roman. I think AJ over on Raw for a little bit might be, might be fun. And then Roman over on, on SmackDown would give it, a, give, give it a different feel. Right. Um, so that's where I would start. Okay. Kamish, where would you start? So you just brought him back. You let him have his emotional moment. You gave him a quick reunion with Seth. Kind of left it in the air of what's going to happen in the next few weeks because they were looking back at Dean. Here's where we start going. Uh, I say cut the whole thing of giving him promos because sometimes it seems like speaking is a weakness of his. I say you give them moments where kind of like let's start up the build up to fast sign. It's in two weeks. Let's have them just like maybe what next week come out like in the middle of like if Seth and Dean are in a situation against like uh, Bobby and his group of friends plus idiot. No, that's not the idiot. I'm talking about the other idiot. The one who didn't want him to come back because he was so stressed out about his job as GM acting. Moron. <laughs> um, let him come out. Let him save the day. And then you issue the challenge. Like, hey, we want a six-man tag. Right. You can even build like hesitation into that match between the three of them just because... We don't really know yet where Roman's mind is as far as the shield is. But we don't. But we know where uh, Seth and Dean are. They're like, you're being weird. Dean's like being himself. Like, eh. But it's like there's still hesitation. Let him put on a decent match. You know, if you want to put Roman over, let him get the victory for the team. Um, I wouldn't throw him back into like super main event status just yet. Like, give him a WrestleMania moment, but not like, oh, you're immediately going to Brock now. No, let 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 them do 
like this whole thing where like they're there for Seth, you know, like there for WrestleMania. Maybe even give him closure because right now we still don't know where Dean's going to go or if he's leaving or if this is a shoot or a work. Um, because you brought that up that this might be a work that Dean could be staying overall that they're just doing this like as potential hype. And in the shakeup, yeah. I would move Roman to SmackDown. Give him a new yard to play in. Give him new fresh competition. Hopefully, maybe Kofi wins the belt at Fastlane and keeps it past WrestleMania. Don't throw him against Kofi, but yeah. like yeah, have yeah, him yeah. work his way up there against like Samoa Joe and Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy. Like Just build him up. Don't throw him immediately into the same situation with the Universal Championship. It's like, yeah, you, you beat The Undertaker, now you're the big dog. You deserve that belt. No, no, no. I would want him to earn his way up. I mean, you can even move Dean there, too. Kind of like, hey, you know, Seth has to be on his own as a Universal Champion if that's where we're going with that belt. Um, if not, maybe you could put all of them together in SmackDown. But I would, that's how I would start with Roman, at least. Like, get him, like, over a little bit on Fastlane. He doesn't have to have a match at WrestleMania, but he could have a moment. Yeah. Put him in SmackDown, have him rebuild himself up, go for the heavyweight championship in a couple months. Just start. No, I don't want to see him fight Brock again. No, I, wants I to see that. never want to see him and Brock fight again. Well, that's let's... another booking choice on my part. Those two don't clash again. Roman got over on him. At it took how whatever. long? Like years? Yeah, like fucking two, two or three, three years. Three years. Uh-huh. Um, but when, when did he actually beat him? Was it at Mania? SummerSlam. So at SummerSlam. We don't need that, that as a WrestleMania moment. Fuck it. We, <laughs> that ship has sailed. We got to see, see it teased twice and you didn't pull the trigger. Move on. I think three times. Um, shit. I would rather see Goldberg and Roman. <laughs> but let me uh, let me jump just keep in. Keep those two apart. Go ahead. Um, for the record, uh, Charlie Caruso actually asked Roman in an exclusive interview last night. Um, Do we see you coming back and you know giving yourself closure with Brock? And this might have been Joe. This might have been Roman. This might have been a mix of both. Where he said, "Let's let's wait. Let's just see you know where things go." So I think maybe even he knows like, "Hey, let's let's not start this again." Like, don't put me in a situation with him already. Yeah. Um, how I would uh, start off with Roman, at least from now until roughly a little after Fastlane. Um, I would say go ahead with the Shield little reunion that we got going. However, going back to your point, don't give this guy 15-minute promos again. I would say keep Roman's appearance very minimal. Like last night was perfect. He came out for a solid five minutes. Okay, he's away. He, you're not shoving him in our face again like Roman's back. Here you go, 20 minutes of Roman again. Um, allow for the fans to, okay, he comes in, he leaves. He comes in, he leaves. And I would say that even at Fastlane, don't have Roman get the pinfall. I would say give it to Seth. Let him build that momentum of going to Mania, getting the pinfall victory. Because that's where you can say, okay, see, Roman's back, but he's not getting all the pinfalls, all the submissions, all the victories, and, you know, hogging up that spotlight yeah. again. It would be a little weird, but you could have Roman hit a, hit, hit a spear and have Seth do Frog Splash or Phoenix Crook Splash. Stomp or something, yeah. And that, that's how you get the win. One way I was also thinking you can kind of build a little bit more love with Roman is that if they can figuratively and literally kind of pick Dean back up because Dean, like I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, seems like he's just fallen. Mm-hmm. He'll be in random segments. He'll be losing matches. And it's like knowing WWE, they're like, because again, it's like WWE, they just, they become so pity. Like, look at all the stuff that they're doing with CM Punk. It's like, okay, dude, yeah, differences. The guy left, let it go. You know? You mean Phil left? Phil left. Phil. Um, um, I as far as going off off your thought real quick, I suspect next week we'll probably see Seth and Roman get jumped. If Roman's going to be around, Seth and Roman get jumped, and Dean comes to their rescue this time, and that's when we get the. Which is fine too, because it going but that kind of goes back to your point. Let Roman be vulnerable. Let him get attacked. Don't just make him out to be this in, invincible, you know, thing. Like let him be fragile. You know, let him get attacked. Um. 
I would say after that, man, you know, with Seth going after his, you know, world title or his championship match with Brock and with Dean maybe leaving the company, I would say that is a great idea. Shift him over to SmackDown, let him, you know, experiment a little bit, you know, new talent, new storyline, you know. I trust Roman more on SmackDown than I do on Roman on Raw. Let him finish something he technically started with Samoa Joe. There you go. Um, I think it'd be kind of cool if we, I don't know if we have a battleground coming up in the next couple of months, but it or in the next, we'll say six months. But if you slide Roman over to SmackDown and you gradually shift him up the card to where he might become world champion for a minute, and you could have him and Seth in a, a brother versus brother match at Battleground or something. And I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Um. But go ahead. I didn't mean to stop. No, 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 no. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think what we're all trying to get to is give it a slow start. I would say to do what you did when the Shield initially split up and Roman went out on his own and Seth and Dean kind of started doing their own thing because that bit was actually really good. I enjoyed that up until you gave him that Royal Rumble win and that's when this whole thing kind of went and veered off out of control. Give Roman that, let him have his place on the card. Let it be mid card. Let the guy come in, do his thing. Yay, we cheer. Cool. Okay. But don't make it where he's in three segments. He's got the microphone, then he gets his match interrupted, then we go to the main event and he's got a rematch. It's like, like learn. It, hopefully you learn your lesson from before. You learn your mistakes. Exactly. Don't the same process. Like exactly. That. So, where would you guys book him after that? Where That's do what you, I was going to say. I, I was going to say, is there an ultimate end game that either of you guys have in mind for this? Well, okay, so the end game would be that Roman is back completely at this point. Well, yeah. So Roman... Is able to continue his career without like the possible possibility that again he goes back into yeah okay so or a, or a marquee match that like a marquee rivalry you want to see this build to like we just well that, I think we're all on the same boat mm, stop with Brock I say no yeah, more Brock Lesnar no more like stop uh, and we don't even know where he's going because. Yeah. Granted, the guy makes over three million, four million a year mm-hmm. uh, through the WWE alone. Okay. Yeah, let's not even <laughs> forget like, that he's probably got still fucking partnerships and shit that give him money. And granted, that the whole you know WWE Fox deal is still right there. It's gonna happen. And UFC and Fox already kind of have their deal as far as like where most of their prelim matches and all that goes on. Brock maybe jumps back. So here's my thing. You don't book them with Brock anymore. Their chemistry is like non-existent done to me. I say the reason why you put them in SmackDown. And I thought about it. I'm like, okay, who's the one person that usually brings out your demons or is willing to roll the ball in a direction where you're like, God, you're just a petty asshole. Kane. Alistair? <laughs> no, Samoa Joe. I was, oh. I was joking. I know. Give, <laughs> give, what, what is it? Rise to hate. Rise above hate. Rise above but hate. <laughs> Joe brought out the worst of AJ as far as like personality with the whole thing with his wife. Joe brought out the worst in Jeff's demons. But that that elevated both their games to be better. Yeah. If you have that with Joe, I'm sure he'll be hesitant backstage politics wise, like, hey, this guy's dealt with cancer. You really want me to go this direction? I already did it with a man's wife, a man's alcohol and drug problems. This you is want, something. You want me to take jabs at leukemia right now? That that's another thing. I was gonna say, leave that out. Do not bring that up. Well, don't that's, don't that's turn this thing. into a storyline. But I, that's just, the thing. Like WWE, unfortunately, is notorious for this. Or you could have them be like, "All right, you, you're you're the big dog. You're coming to our yard now. You know you haven't really done anything to earn it. Like have Joe be the ant- antagonist. That's fine. That, that brings it out of him. Like, oh, you're still weak. Like you you're. You don't belong here. You could have him kind of fill the the role of of Kane when in in that feud with John Cena though, where he he's the purpose is trying to push him to to uh, get back on get fully back on the horse. Yeah, and I would say that that's the best person to do it with because honestly, it's someone in Roman Reigns' size as far as like big guy versus big guy style. And I think you can actually, like, because whenever Roman is faced with someone that's not Brock Lesnar in a main event, 
you see Roman wrestle. You actually see him elevate his wrestling game. When you see him with Brock, it's like, all right, F5, Superman punch. Spear from you, spear from you, German suplex, German suplex, and we're done. <laughs> Man, you memorized their last match? Or all their matches? Um, um, all, all, all three. I, uh... But I, you get... But, like, you, you see where I'm going with this. Yeah. Like, you, you see him build this rivalry. I like, think you could do that and get the point across of the, the cancer without mentioning the cancer by just having some sort of line come out of Joe's mouth. Like, hey, Roman, you're still looking fragile. Or if you look weak. Yeah. If you say something in that vein, I think it'll get the the thought process into the into the crowd's mind without expressly hammering home. Hey, you still look like you're got, you got cancer. Because <laughs> I think that would turn people off. Go ahead, though. But, like, you, you get him into this rivalry during the summer with Samoa Joe. Kind of have Roman earn his way up to, like, a yeah. championship match. Yeah. Like, uh, do, like in a way, I kind of don't want to put the WWE Championship on him, just because I'm hoping that they're gonna put the belt on Kofi. Yeah, and Kofi gets a good run out of it. I would only do it if we were gonna go to a Seth Roman battleground match. Yeah, like that's that's the the big thing. That's the big reason in my mind to put the belt on him. Otherwise, yeah, Roman's a big enough name where he doesn't necessarily need the belt. Or what so. if you book him in a championship match, but he doesn't win the championship? Yeah. I mean, you again, can still put him over as far as the match goes, but yeah, not have and, him win. and that gives somebody else the rub because of the fact that Roman is Roman. Yeah, so. but that that's where I would start going after the fact. I would like have him build the rivalry with someone that can bring out that animalistic nature in you. And <laughs> amazingly and unfortunately, it's Samoa Joe. <laughs> with all the recent NXT call ups, too, I wouldn't mind if we see like an Alistair Black versus a Roman or even a Tommaso Ciampa versus yeah. a Roman. Any of those guys versus him would be I think fun. Alistair would fit. Alistair bit. would be the face darkness and Ciampa would be like the heel, sick twisted, you know, who can make those remarks and get it out of him. I, I, I bet that Gargano and, and Roman would be able to have a really solid match because yeah. pretty much Gar- any match I've seen Gargano in lately he brings out match is, of the year quality. is great. Yes. Um, I wouldn't even mind a year from now doing a mini a mini heel run with Roman because I think he, I think he doesn't suffer from John Cena syndrome in the same way. I think especially if you don't make him like a a fucking prick heel. I think if you just make him sort of a jaded kind of angry kind of guy, but a year you do it a year from now you do kind of what you did with Dean. But less cartoony, less stupid. Yeah, less comic book. But you could, a year from now, have him kind of turn... And don't have him necessarily turn on the fans, because then that's going to turn that switch back, and the fans are going to be like, well, then fuck this guy. (laughs) But Have it be in a way where, like, he is booked to win something, he gets screwed somehow... Yeah, you and either have pissed. yeah you either have him turn on the establishment or you just have him start brutalizing uh, people uh, because he's a he's a big strong dude. Yeah, you could you could especially like if you if you have Kofi with the belt or you have Daniel Bryan who's turned face again at that point, um, which I don't know if he necessarily will. I think we might see heel Daniel Bryan for for a very very long time. And I wouldn't mind a heel Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns. Yeah, um, but. Yeah, I, I w- I'd like to see a, a sh- at least a short run. Two, three, four months of Roman being heelish. Yeah. Because it, it'll, again, be a, ch- a change of pace. It'll, make, it'll keep the fans invested. Because no offense to John Cena, that's what ended up making half the fan base. And it became a game for the fans to kind of shit on him. <laughs> but that's what made half the fans turn on him in the first place. Is you... St- Ten years of John Cena. Let's it was like ten years Cena. of Cena being the same fucking guy. And you're like... <laughs> was it? Let's Jesus go Cena. Cena. Cena sucks. Let's go Cena. Cena, Cena sucks. sucks. But that's what, John, that's what happened with John Cena. We all respected the guy, but we were like, this fucking character is awful. So It's if, the same character. Exactly. And so if you switch Roman up every once in a while, just... Throw throw a little a little shake up into the into his anti hero into him yeah uh, give give him a Becky ish run yeah um, but that and, puts him over even more 
Is you would that, have, is you would have they to, want? Well, they still want him at the top, I'm assuming. But again, I don't want him to be. I, I don't want him to be your top. Your top guy. I don't want there to be a top guy. We've had this conversation before. I think that the Attitude Era was run brilliantly because you had so many big names or so many like kind of up here names that you could just kind of weave together yeah. at any given time and you'd still have a good feud that would still draw ratings. And well, now you had that stretch of time where you were leaning on Roman because he was your only fucking star. Yeah. I mean, I think back to when Austin was run over by the car and was gone for a year. Mm-hmm. You su- you sub- uh, substitute in your Triple H, your Mankind, your Rock. There were people to fulfill that role. And even when Austin came back, there was facilitation of everything. Now you newly built people. Yeah. And more, more viable opponents to throw together. Well, okay. Take, take your top three, the guys... From Raw and SmackDown. Who do you get? Right now. So we're going right now. six total or three total? Three total six. or six total? So three, like three. three from Raw, three from SmackDown. Seth? Mm, Braun? I'm iffy about Braun right now. Even That's why I kind of hesitated because I'm like... Because I'd say Seth and Drew. Seth, Drew, and Lashley. Lastly, you know why? Because okay, there's been this whole poking thing about I'm the one who can beat Brock Lesnar. He's he's still like, yeah, I missed my Intercontinental Championship, but they still poke fun at that whole fact that I'm the guy that could do it. I'm the guy who can really beat him. You you rely on Seth, you rely on Braun, you rely on all the wrong people but me. I think that's where it comes from that he could be one of those main eventers right now on Raw. Because honestly, you can't say Brock. The guy is hardly fucking there and that Universal Championship belongs to Raw. Brock at this point is Brock. Um, He he unfortunately transcends um, the other stars. He's just... It's sort of like you're asking us to pick three and three, but then you got like this side bubble for Brock Lesnar. So who do we think from SmackDown? I think uh, Daniel and Brian and is between Randy, Jeff, and and Joe. They're like on the reverse cycle of like the third. Randy at this point is like a veteran who he's just a veteran do, jobber who who just do your fill-ins. Yeah. Um, I probably well, I don't I I, I feel like I need a list. Like, okay, so you know I why I asked you guys to do that because we can't. Exactly. <laughs> now, if you did it overall, you would say what? Daniel, AJ, and Seth. Seth. That's it. That makes it easier for the whole company. Even with the brand split, it's hard to do it. If it was all meshed back and together, it's no problem. If this is the attitude era, yeah, you can mention four or five different people after Austin was gone that can carry the ball. This is the this is the problem. Like you, you have. Something so like saturated now that it's kind of hard to be like, that's my main guy. That's my main guy too. That like, you could do it no problem back then. Now it's like, he might be able to do it. I'm not sure. Well, that's also another big problem is the booking. Dean right now should have been the third guy in the shield who could carry the company, who could do all of that. But because you watered him down on his promos, his fighting style, his character. Like, I was thinking about this last night. I'm like, you screwed up the Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose feud. The one feud that everybody was looking forward to, you just, you screwed up. The one people wanted to see, but they wanted to see it back in the direction that Dean was the face, Seth was the heel. But now we're getting it the other way. Maybe it'll be even better than it was before. Oh my God, this is boring. boring. Gas mask. Yeah. Um, so, going back to Roman, where would you guys book him at WrestleMania? Would you book him at WrestleMania? Versus, I said versus Drew. Drew yeah, wants so George. bad to take Seth's place, but Drew hasn't really earned it. Who wins, though? Honestly? Drew. Drew. Drew? Yeah. I mean, is that, is that what you're going with? I'd, yeah. I'd let Drew win. I, I, that's, that's, where, that's what I'm saying. Is I, that's where you have that vulnerable moment. You can have Roman put up a, a decent fight. Or even a great fight. Yeah, because he's still, like, he's still wily. He's still the big dog. Yeah. 
Um, you don't bury him, but you have him. You just have him lose clean. Don't have fucking shenanigans. Have Drew beat him. Yes, yeah, shenanigans. Because Drew, I swear to God, I'll pistol whip the next person says <laughs> shenanigans. Um, just have Drew beat him because Drew's good. Yeah, he doesn't need help to beat anybody. No, he doesn't. He never um, really needed Dolph Ziggler, but still. And 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 that's how you build Drew. And then we'll have. And then we can definitively say, oh, Seth, the Drew, and Roman are your top three on Raw. Um. Because they're getting there, um, but then you had—I mean, you had that shit with with Elias, but that was supposed to kind of show that well, Dean still kind of got it. He yeah. can come out of nowhere and, and get you, and then Elias interfered, um, which I didn't have a problem with, except for the fact that I don't understand what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, at this point, it looks like they're trying to pull the trigger on a, an excuse for a Shield reunion, which is fine because that can help to kind of bring Roman back as like partially. Um, by the same token, like I said, don't let him get the pinfall. Just let him come in, do his thing. Just like the old days when the Shield was initially together. Um, do you have them cause mayhem and riot? Or do you have them like... Okay, have him, have him be back, the powerhouse. But... Have him be the powerhouse. Let him be the muscle of the group just like before. Last night was a perfect example. Dean's in trouble. Seth comes out and the big dog comes in. A couple Superman punches, a spear here and there. That's it. Don't have him come out and, you know, put on, you know, a headlock and try to... No, you know, don't try to do any of that. Don't give him 15 minutes on the promo. Make his his time in the ring very minimal. Let the fans kind of, okay, he's, they're giving it to us. They're kind of taking it away. They're giving it to us. Don't just go, here, Roman's back. Here you go, you know? Because then you're asking for all the boos, all the... The, the polarizing reaction, so to speak. Which is the worst, by the way. <laughs> like, honestly, like, I can't understand that crowd half the time nowadays because it's like, and I hate that I have to bring this up during a Roman conversation, but, like, we've had two, if not three, of the best tag team matches on Raw. No one gave a damn. The crowd, like, they even acknowledged it. The oh, Pat McAfee. Yeah, 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 that oh. guy. <laughs> Um, he, he's a big WWE fan. They actually acknowledge it. They're like, everybody loved last week's Raw, except the crowd and Lafayette. <laughs> they actually acknowledge it. They're like, well, dude, this? come on. You had the Revival win. And, or was that the night they won? No, it was um, when all the well, NXT call-ups c- came up. and That was, I think, the best tag team match I've seen in a while. By anybody. And it's like... Oh, what? I mean, in all honesty, I've seen Nikki Cross come out like two or three times, and everyone is just dead. Dude, I haven't seen her since fucking in a while, and then you just saw her instantly there for Ric Flair, and it's like... Yeah, it's because they haven't done anything with her, not really. Um, they put she her show, fucking... She shows up... Well, she's, she's been losing all her matches. Yeah, and and there's even the matches are sporadic, I think. I don't like. I don't actually know when her last matches took place. She had a tag place. match with Alicia Fox. Alicia Fox. Like she was tagged with Alicia Fox. Yeah, like no, she, she had a singles match and she lost to I forget who. That was before that. Weird. Was it before? Yes. See, we don't even know. That's yeah. how bad it is. Um, I don't know if they. <sighs> there seems to be a lot of tag team building going on. I know now we're going on a small a small tangent. Seems to be a lot of tag team building going on. Yeah. But maybe like the. Uh, DIY is being is really being brought up to be a tag team in the the re replenished tag division. Almost looked like they were trying to make Ricochet and Alistair a viable tag team. Um, and then even on the women's side, maybe they're gonna pair Alicia and Nikki because they're both crazy. Mm, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like that. You would. What? No, I said I wouldn't like oh, that. You would. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> um, I wouldn't like that, because uh, it's weird. It's Th- weird. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. But anyway, sorry. I, that, that's my we thoughts on that. We go on tangents, on people. That. Excuse that's my us. thought process on that. So continue. <laughs> so here's the thing. Like, booking needs to be done correctly for Roman at this point. Like, honestly, for everyone. But, but mostly him right now in his career, because it's like, okay, he was gone for four months. He seems to be back in good health. Kind of looks a little smaller than last. 
time we saw him, dude, he does look a little small. Capitalize on capitalize on that, though. Going back to Dan's point, it's like, yeah, Roman, you're back, but what's going on? You look a little different, you know? You're looking a little soft. <laughs> Not S A W F T. S A F T people. Um. But okay. Like, build, build, build on that. Build on that momentum where it's like, okay, you, you want something out of him, but you really need to do a good job because honestly. It's and I told you this last week. It seems like sometimes there's good episodes of Raw and SmackDown depending on who's producing, and then it's like all oh, the typical. Oh, yeah. I'm this. Oh, this looks dumb. This looks boring. The new tell. face, new matches, new Raw. Um, Goddamn authority. So I guess we all agree that um, Roman versus Drew at Mania with Drew going over clean would be kind of a good way to say, okay, he's back, but we're not giving him, you know, the W all the time. Where would you book Roman after Mania all the way to SummerSlam of this year? Wait, wait, so the shakeup is... When is it? I think it's supposed to be after, right, right after WrestleMania. A few weeks after right? WrestleMania. Okay. Probably pre-backlash. Yeah. Like, or like, it's usually after Mania, like, a week, if not two weeks after. Yeah. Because they try to, like, well, guess who we're sending here? Yeah. After all their bullshit at Mania. 2019. Bullshit being fucking Ronda. Uh, that. Oh, I want to address that so bad, but this is dedicated to Roman. That's a good episode today. <laughs> What it is, I, I know you don't want to talk about her, but like after what happened yesterday, it's like. So when is when is, when is WrestleMania yeah. actually? What day? Do you April seventh. Seventh. So it would be the following week. Because yeah. it looks okay. like it's the fourteenth, fifteenth is when they're planning to do it. Okay. Um, Which is fine. Yeah, April seventh. So it's the the following week. Okay. Um. Which is fine because then you can ride the high horse of that Raw after Mania and give us all those big moments, and then you go to Superstar Shakeup. Yeah. Um. I would move him to SmackDown. Okay. I'm 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 all in on that. I'm all in. I'm double or nothing on that one. Um. Move Roman over to SmackDown. Um. Have him. <laughs> The hell's up? Have have him start with a, have him start with a program with Joe. I'll say I'll say start him off there. Um, I because I think he, we we build to Mania. He loses to Drew. Right. He gets shifted over. This gives this makes it so so he doesn't get a chance. And you can even have that be a plot plot line. He doesn't get a chance to get his win back over Drew because he gets moved to SmackDown. Right. Uh, he feuds with Joe. Joe pokes at him, says, "Ah, you couldn't even beat Drew McIntyre. La da da da. You're looking soft." And so you have that feud, and that's Roman's first win. He beats Samoa Joe in this in this feud. Um, you could even have it be a two like a two match feud where he does lose in the first one, and then he beats Joe, and so there's your your now I'm back on track. Right. Okay. Um, from there. Um, I would have him... So you've just booked until Backlash, right? He, may, maybe even the second pay-per-view after okay. right, after Mania. Whatever that is. Whichever one that is. I'm going to see real quick if I can pull up the WWE pay-per-view. Might schedule. be Extreme Rules. Now that uh, WWE extreme Rules is July. Schedule. That's there. three and four months We also that. got money in the bank, so you can incorporate that. Mm, that okay. Because I was so, thinking, you take Roman to the title picture for a second. Oh, guys, we might have a Saudi Arabia show after no, Backlash. No, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. that concludes the episode. Thank it's, you so much for it's, watching. It's Backlash, um, potential Saudi Arabia show, takeover, Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank. So you might even be able to book book him to Money in the Bank in that case. Has he won a Money in the Bank? No. I'm not saying give him money in the bank because then that would that would open the that floodgates for him to jump back to fucking raw and I don't want to do that. Yeah. I want him on SmackDown for a year, um, or at least like nine months. You can throw him back right before Mania if you want to, but um, well, fuck it. In that case, yeah, you might give him the money in the bank and then he uses that later down the road to jump back over there, right? Because maybe Drew 
There you go. You Drew took finally away everything I was gonna say. Drew finally. Yeah. Sorry, I go on tangents. I connect things. <laughs> um, if you want to jump in, you can uh, here in a second. But I would say have Drew maybe pick up the title later in the year. Roman cash gets money in the bank, cashes in to go fight Drew. Wait, where, where are you? What pay per view are you in? Um, at that point, we're after money in the bank. I would probably have that be your Survivor Series main event. Okay. Mm, okay. I have a different way of doing. Well, it. that's fine. I'm just looking at the calendar. No, I know. I like. I don't want to do. Like I don't want to do it on the Saudi Arabia show in November mm. either. So. Ah, God, come on, <laughs> why? <laughs> All right. It's after Mania. It's literally the week after the shakeup. You. Let's just say you don't announce that uh, Roman Reigns is going to SmackDown. You have him surprise us. You hit his music. He comes in. He does a promo. That would be interesting. After actually. Mania. And guess who's there to interrupt him? Samoa Joe. Like always. Like, oh, who the hell are you to come here? You know, you're not the big dog anymore. This is not your yard. Yeah. This, and you can have Joe claim that it's his, even though we all know it's not. What, what's, Joe, what's Joe's wife's name? Wendy. Oh, Everybody in the WWE is married to somebody named Wendy, apparently. apparently. <laughs> um, so you have them building on something. What's the first pay-per-view after Mania? Ah, non Saturday. And then TakeOver's right after? Well, that's uh, NXT, yeah, so... That's NXT. But so yeah, it's it's black, backlash takeover, money in the bank, extreme rules. Okay, so let's just say, uh, like you don't have him win that backlash. Galena, that's his wife's name. So Joe comes out <laughs> calling calling out Galena. Oh. Galena. <laughs> that sounds wrong. <laughs> you have him win after backlash. Money in the bank comes. You have obviously six person match. Let's have Roman win it. You can even have him go into a new rivalry. Like, let's say he doesn't use it to cash in, but they book him against Kofi for a while. But he doesn't win that belt. Um, I say the best way you bring him back to his loss against Drew, for some reason, you build a match Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. You have Drew and Roman. Team Opposite Raw, Team sides. SmackDown. As your last two. As your last two. Okay. Roman gets his win there. There you go. TLC comes. Drew beats whoever his opponent is. He has the belt. Guess who just cashed in? Successfully? Ultimate, yeah. Okay. Ultimate revenge. <laughs> Roman comes out. Hits him with the Superman punch. Is this right at TLC? Yeah. Okay. Like, Drew barely escapes and survives his match against uh, whoever his opponent is at that point. This granted that WWE actually finally gives Drew a belt run. I just had an idea, but continue. That's where I would... But that's how far I would go. I, I would go past Survivor Series because it's like... To have him cash in a Survivor Series takes away from me. I think you should have Drew at one point. Like, like, I always get... I get it. There's supposed to be a champion versus champion match. But, like, I would rather it, like, just be, like, Team Raw. Team, team yeah, the traditional. Yeah. So, to go off of that, I'm thinking Seth wins um, against Brock at Mania. Which we all want. Which we all want. He's champion until TLC. Drew McIntyre beats Seth at TLC. Roman cashes in. Gets the title. You can finish that thing with Drew. And then Seth goes, Drew beat me for the title. Now you have my title. Now I got to face you. And I, I think, Dan, you brought this up. You go with the Seth versus Roman now for the title at Mania. Next year's Mania. 36. But that's your best way to bring Roman back to Raw. Right? Yeah. I mean, hell, maybe even oh no, because he'll be champion. But I was thinking, well, what if, okay, what if okay, what if he doesn't win the like the Money in the Bank? He goes on to do his feuds with whoever he wants at SmackDown for a while. Um, he has an opportunity against Kofi, doesn't get it. Team Raw, Team SmackDown. Um, 
Let's say Drew beats Seth for the belt, but then Seth beats Drew for the belt back. Then you can have your closure of Drew versus Roman at Survivor Series, Team Raw, Team SmackDown. Roman wins for SmackDown. Uh, oh, I, no, he needs money in the bank. So say he does win it, but doesn't cash it in against Drew. Seth um, wins it back from Drew, then he cashes it on Seth? Is that, what, is that what you're going I would say he cashes in, but he does it at Royal Rumble. Okay. Keep Roman off Raw till next year. Okay. And then you can build, oh, okay. You took something of mine that I worked hard to get back. I want to see if I'm good enough to, to face the big dog now. Then you get Seth versus Roman finally. So I think Romania. I think we're all leading to Seth versus Roman for thirty six. Yeah. yeah, it does, and that one doesn't even have to be one of them's a heel. I think that that could just just be a, a brother versus brother. Yeah. Let's see who the better. You, you have stakes like the title. That's fine. Where it's like, well, what, I got the belt. You want the belt? All right, let's fight or something like that. But. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think that'd be a good match. I think that'd be a, a good match to have, especially if you don't do it as a heel versus face match, given the fact that we got to see that a couple of times back Seth after Seth heel. took the, yeah, when he took the belt in the first place. Um, now, ultimate question is, who would you have win that match? Um, I know who you're advocating for to win that. But then again, I think about it, I'm like, we've kind of been booking him to lose dominantly over that next year. So when does he kind of catch his break? Because we had him Roman? lose against, yeah, because we had him lose against Drew this year. Yeah, then, I'm losing to Joe. But he kind of wins, but okay. He wins um, Money in the Bank, um, cashes in, gets the title. Right? And I Royal Rumble. At the Royal Rumble, he cashes and gets the title? From Seth. Yeah. From Seth. So, it's like, you don't want Roman going off on this losing... You don't want him to pull a Kurt Hawkins, but by the same token, you don't want him to mm. win, win, win. I think he can win matches on the weekly, um, but I think you got to have him drop a couple of big matches. Yeah. Um... I wouldn't even have a problem if you have the brother versus brother match end with a Roman heel turn. Ooh. Um, where you have you have it go- you have it going well. Maybe maybe Roman's about to lose, and then he does the heel turn and he beats Seth, and then you got that that mo- that small stretch where Roman's the bad guy now. Yeah. But that might give him just that might give him the right fan heat. Where then the fans are like, ah, this motherfucker, ah, he turned on his buddy, as opposed to, God, this guy's getting pushed. Yeah. But then him being a bad guy gives him a reason to be back at the top, versus Vince wanted him back at the top. Yeah. And I think that might be your crowning moment for him. Okay, I kind of thought of something right now. Okay. I'm going back to Money in the Bank. He does win. Uh... Hopefully you guys are taking notes because I know we keep jumping forward and back. In <laughs> September, after some SummerSlam, let's say Kofi has a match against someone and he wins. Anybody. <laughs> Whoever is in the title hunt. Kurt Hawkins. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Granted, he's in. Roman cashes in on Kofi. He's SmackDown's Ooh. champion. Wow, okay. You want a champion versus champion match? Seth still has the belt by Survivor Series. Face versus face, brother versus brother. You could have either or win. But you'd leave one of them feeling, I should have won. I should be the better victor of the two. And then... Get a run in my breath last night. God, no. (laughs) Uh, You could leave that tension building to Royal Rumble. You take the belt off Roman... Leave leave the Universal Championship on Seth. Um, Roman's bitter at this point. You can have him be bitter because he loses, like, in TLC. He loses the belt to Kofi or whoever earns it by the end of this year. He enters the Rumble. Would that have made him a two-time winner? Yeah. 
Okay, so he wins the Rumble next year. I know you're pushing for Cesaro. I'm sorry. But you have Roman have this tension like... I lost what was mine. Now I'm coming I'll for use yours. The rumble as the as the portal back to Raw. Yeah, and he's can... still on SmackDown, but he's chosen like whoever's the champion on SmackDown, whoever's the champion on Raw. Like he won't do what Seth does. Like, oh, this is hard for me to decide. On one reason, I can go against the real uh, the new Daniel Bryan, or I can go to Super. No, you literally have Roman win the following night. He's like, I don't need to hesitate. I want what's mine. Yeah, yeah. Seth has what's yeah, mine. Yeah, I'm Becky. It. Yeah. We keep coming back to Becky. <laughs> you have him go after Seth. Like, I think you have something that really belongs to me. And then you can start building on, like, Roman being bitter about it. You can even build it and say, last time I won the Rumble and went to Mania, you cashed in and took my title. You took something that belonged yeah. to me. Now I've won the Rumble again. I'm taking back what's mine. Yeah. Play off of that. Make that bitterness really come out yeah, of Roman. Like you can have it. Like it's been a bitter feeling since that mania. Yeah. Like you stole my moment. You were the one raising that championship when the show ended when it should have been me. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go into mania. You didn't have Roman win the the belt at mania, but he. I get it. You always have to have like a face, have a happy ending at Mania, but yeah. last year. <laughs> but you could have Roman win it, and then at that point, I don't know how far further in you can go with booking. Well, I I think to that. I, that's point, how I would want to book yeah. it. I I thought about it when you were saying it. Like, no, you can have a champion versus champion, but let Seth win yeah. and start building this type thing, like. This is the second time he took something that means to, something to me. Yeah. It should have been me. Yeah. Play off that of Mania. Like, no, you did this once. Now you're doing it again years later. You build this thing where it's like, you're Seth selfish. Sick, all you ever want is... shit. All you ever want is the, the spotlight on you. You, yeah. you cannot ever let anyone else have it. Yeah, you can even throw in a promo like, see what you did to Dean... If Dean leaves, like, you made one of our brothers leave. Like, you don't make it as personal, but you bring some fire yeah. to it. Yeah. So, that's a lot of booking. Um, <laughs> it's a year's worth of yeah, booking. Yeah, I think a year's about as far as you can yeah, go yeah, at yeah, any yeah, yeah. given time of fantasy right. booking, unless you're drunk. Um, <laughs> one final thing. <laughs> well, you listen, I got a, I got a five-year plan for Roman Reigns. <laughs> How much have I had to drink? <laughs> Just more. WrestleMania 40. We bring Brock Lesnar back. <laughs> Brock's retired. He, he's, he comes back. He's 63 years old now. Wait a minute. I don't think that's how time works. <laughs> <laughs> um, one final thing, and I guess I'm taking a survey here. Hey, yo. What's the one thing that you would change with Roman this time around? Personally, for me, I'm going to throw this out there. Less exposure. As weird as that sounds. Don't give me 20 minutes on the mic. Don't give me three segments on one Raw. Yeah. Minimize. Minimize, minimize, minimize. Last I, promo. I agree. Um, I, I, I think that's a, a formula for su- success most of the time. Is you get tops two moments on the show. A promo and a match. Yes. For anybody. So I agree. Um, for me, it's showing that vulnerability. Yes. I think, I think that if he doesn't, even once he's back on the horse, you don't make him suddenly Superman again. Yeah. Um, but he can, he can give a stronger showing. Yeah. Uh, start him out to where he's kind of an underdog, and then he becomes equal with his opponents. Don't, don't, sh- yeah, don't shove him. Don't Superman him. To yeah, the top cool. again. Um, so that's mine. Less promos. So less talking. Less talking. Less appearances on the show. Less talking, more action. Less less of a Superman. And actual action, not just get my ass kicked for ten minutes and then come back with a Superman punch yeah. in a spear and win the match. I think that's one thing that we've talked about before is Joe needs to explore his move set more. Because I think we talked about the fact that he used to do a few used to do a few yeah. more moves back in NXT in the earlier days. Um, bring it back. Stop being so limited. You don't need to be protected in that way. 
Uh, the fans, uh, the fans appreciate it more when you have a more diverse move set. You don't have to have a thousand and four moves. What was uh, move number one thousand four? The arm bar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good times, good times. And uh, move number one hundred three. The Saskatchewan leg drop of Doom Fate. Who uses that? Uh, I forgot his name. I think it was the Shockmaster. The, Ma- yeah. the Mountie? No, he's he's booked in jail <laughs> somewhere by the. Oh no, he passed away. Never mind. Oh, oh awkward. Okay. I forgot he passed away. Sorry. <laughs> probably probably after taking move one thousand and two. The arm bar. Anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I would say expand your move set, be exposed less, talk less, um, and uh, don't be afraid to take a few beatings. Mm-hmm. Sound good? Is that good? Sounds great. All right. All right. Thank you again to Kraft Parmesan Cheese for sponsoring this episode as well as Coca-Cola. And with a great meal like that, remember, you can also catch all your favorite WWE programming only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of only... Nine ninety nine. So there you go, guys. We just fantasy booked Roman and how we feel like he should kind of come back into the fold and what we feel like they should and shouldn't do with the guy. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you all next time.